Hey everyone, welcome back to Watch and Carry. So in today's video, I'm going to be covering the uh, lighting that I use on my rides. Um, I usually don't ride at nighttime, but occasionally I will get out of work late enough uh, to the point that I do have to use um, some lights to help me uh, both be seen and to light up my pathway uh, to get back home. So this won't be too long. Um, I'm going to go over what my setup looks like. Um, and then I'm going to show you the uh, websites that I ordered it from. So right in front of you, there's a helmet that you can see. Um, the uh, name for this type of helmet, uh, the class of helmet, I guess, is called a tactical helmet. And I guess tactical because it comes with these uh, rails on the side where you can mount uh, different um, attachments, uh, tools, or in my case, uh, lighting. Um, this one came with uh, two rails, so it came with one here and one here. And I removed the one on the right because I only need the one on the left. And it has this attachment here in the front, which I believe is for everything from a GoPro to, you know, if you're somebody in the military, you could attach, you know, um, night vision goggles to that, um, flashlights. Um, and then on the back, they have some Velcro here. Uh, this is something that I've added, which I'm going to go over later. And it just has some um, padding um, here. So it's really well cushioned, very comfortable. It has this cam system in the back uh, where you can adjust the uh, tension around, um, around your head. And of course, it comes with the straps. Uh, this one comes with a chin strap as well, if you would like to wear it that way. And um, all the padding on the inside is uh, completely removable. Um, they also provide you with uh, different sizes of padding. So this one is a little bit larger for my uh, shape of head, but it comes with padding that's a little bit smaller inside the kit. And all of the padding is attached to the helmet uh, with uh, Velcro. Okay, and then on the side of that helmet, I have attached my uh, flashlight. Uh, I'll go over the specs on that later, but uh, this attachment right here, this railing, and then this adapter here is a certain classification of attachment. You've probably heard of Picatinny as a very common attachment for firearms. Um, this one is called FAST, F-A-S-T. So if you're looking for a helmet and you want this setup, you're going to want one that has the FAST attachment um, setup. Okay. Um, so what I did was I ordered this adapter separately. So let me pull this out and show it to you. So ignoring the flashlight, I ordered this attachment separately, which is meant for a tack light. And again, as I had mentioned, this is for the fast railing system, which is this right here. Okay. And then the flashlight I use is a Lux Pro. Okay. This has a recessed. Uh, button and I really like this light uh, number one because it's it's bright and it's durable but number two because of the simplicity of operation so like most flashlights this has a button to turn it on and off okay but what I do like is once it's on it has a separate switch here or I should say a knob here where you can select the different levels of brightness so I will turn off the lights really quick and show that to you so right now that's strobe, sorry about that. That's gonna be your low setting. You twist again, your medium setting, and then twist again, that's gonna be your high setting. So, you know, it really depends what you like. Some people like the setup where there are different, um, uh, different toggles for different modes. Some people like it where you push on the button for a few seconds to access a different mode for the light. Uh, but for me, it's it's really it's really simple. I think so. I like that design. This one is also XP, I believe, seven rated or XP six, or IPX. I'm sorry, not XP, IPX six or IPX seven. But I'll go over that later. And then, like I said, I've attached it to um, that adapter for the fast system. So this is going to provide me uh, for basically my headlight allows me to see ahead of my path. I've also, the, this uh, adapter here is kind of nice too, because if you can see there um, where my uh, index finger is, you can actually adjust the angle. So once this is clipped on, I can either adjust the angle to point this more down or point it more up. I find that important because um, I adjusted this while I was on my board to make sure that my light was far enough ahead that I could see, but not 
too high that I was blinding, you know, people who were driving. So that's a really nice feature for the adapter. So if that covers the headlight for my brake light, I have this light right here. This is also an LED. And this is what attaches to the back of my helmet here. And this one you can either slide in and clip in, um, well, you need two hands to do this, so I'm just going to simulate. You can either slide it in this orientation, or you can slide it in this orientation. And then this here is removable, and this just uses a simple pull and secure mechanism that you can either wrap on your helmet or on your belt or somewhere else that will be convenient for you. And then you just push that tab to kind of release the light. Uh, with this one, it has multiple modes. So let's show that to you. You click once to turn on the red light, click a second time to get blinking, third time for white. That would possibly make it a uh, pretty effective headlight if for you. Push it again to turn it off. And I think there was a strobe mode, I thought, where it went between, oh, there we go. So that's red and then white. And then to turn off everything, you just push and hold for like two or three seconds. Okay, and this one is kind of nice because not only is it bright, but it is USB, micro USB rechargeable, which I always prefer. Uh, this flashlight, by the way, is kind of micro USB rechargeable. So what you do is you have to unscrew the back. You know, like those cell phones a couple years ago when they had removable batteries, you take this. And this one actually comes with a separate battery cradle that you you know, insert this into, and then that battery cradle itself has a uh, micro USB attachment uh, to it. So anything with micro USB, I'm a big fan of because that's pretty universal and I have a lot of connections um, in my electronics bin that I can carry with me. Um, so let me show you what the actual products are that we just went over. So the Let's go in order here. So the helmet itself, I ordered from Amazon, and this is the name. Comes in one size only. And this will fit a head circumference of 22.4 to 23.5. So go on to Google, look what is the proper way to measure your head circumference if you don't know already take a measurement and then see if your head will fit into there and you can get um, different colors so the one i ordered here is in gray you can get ones with looks like some additional accessories if you want you can get um, camo looks like all right and this one costs uh, 43 dollars and 88 cents with uh, one day delivery so that's kind of nice um, the attachment. So what I attached my flashlight to this adapter here is what we're going to go over next. So, uh, don't be confused by the helmet here. You don't get any of that. This page just includes these four attachments. And this is called the one Tigris helmet rail adapter accessory rail. And you can see here that it is fast compatible. Okay. Which is again, that railing system. So going back to that helmet that I went over earlier, make sure you check what kind of system it uses. So in this case, uh, mine uses that fast system, right? And you get four different adapters. So two Picatinny rails, it looks like, one other rail, which I'm not sure of, this one here, and then the flashlight adapter. I will mention um, the diameter flashlight that this allows was not provided on this page. So when I actually got it in the mail, I was taking a risk and of course it did not fit my flashlight. My flashlight is a one inch diameter. So what I did was I just took a rough measurement, went to Lowe's and I found um, a screw or a fastener that was the right length. And I was able to know the thread type to get because the one in the kit from one Tigris, I brought it to Lowe's. And you know Lowe's has those um, thread readers. You can kind of screw it in and see which one is yours. So I would recommend you bring the, um, the uh, screws that come with this one Tigris um, adapter and you can find your thread from there. I believe this is an M6. 
uh, thread type, metric six. And the length that I got, I'm not quite sure. Actually, I can probably take a measure for you right now. Let's see. So this looks like it's a what 0.75 of an inch yeah 0.75 of an inch okay so hopefully that helps you out and this one sells on amazon for twelve dollars and 98 cents again with uh, prime delivery and then let's go to the flashlight that this will attach to which i showed you earlier this one i got off of dick's sporting goods and this is the Lux Pro 1000 on the website, but the technical model number for this is actually uh, here. It's the XP910. So a few reasons why I bought this. Number one, it was on sale and Dix had a 20% um, coupon that applied to it. So I really just bought it for the cost. But I've been using this for backpacking for a couple months now. And yes, it is a little bit larger than some flashlights, but I do like this. It's got a thousand lumens that... Uh, will give you three and a half hours at a thousand lumens, five and a half hours at 250 lumens, and 43 hours at 50 lumens. So I think that's, I don't know, I'm not an expert with flashlights, but for me that was pretty um, impressive. And then those are the modes and features that you have on it. I kind of already went with them on the light. And again, as I mentioned, I just like having a button doing one thing and then a knob to do a separate thing. I don't want to go through multiple menus in a flashlight to figure out how to use it. And then I also forgot to mention, I do like that the um, glass or the lens itself, whatever you call this part, is recessed below this um, crown. So that way it adds a little bit of protection if you happen to drop it. And this one sells currently for um, $39 on Dick's Sporting Goods. I would just wait because I think every two weeks or every month Dick's has a uh, coupon that comes out for 15 or 20% off your order, unless you are buying a Leatherman item. Okay, and let's go for next the brake light slash headlight. So this is the Maple Seeker bike tail light, again off of Amazon. You guys can log on to Amazon and read most of this for yourself, but here's just a quick snapshot. Five lighting modes, rechargeable with micro USB, and then it's got a pretty good um, waterproof rating. I don't know. Did they talk about the waterproof rating on this? Yeah, there we go. IPX4. Eh, it's not great, actually. Definitely would be a little bit worried if this thing was submerged in water. Um, but it's decently bright. And I've had uh, my friend use this, and he was exactly um, 50 yards in front of me and I could still see him very, very clearly. So it's a very good light. I will let you know when you do order this, they do have some options to order a different model that has red and blue flashing. You can already see the problem of what that's gonna mean if you're flashing red and blue, right? It's gonna simulate like a police officer. So, you know, be cognizant of what lighting colors are allowed in your area. I don't know where you would look for that, but I would probably say just steer clear of red and blue and just get the plain um, red. So when I ordered mine, I clicked on this option that says red and white. And then look, if you click on that one, it says red and blue, which I would not recommend getting. And then this one is all three colors combined. Okay, and this one sells on Amazon for 12 dollars and 99 cents and going back to that lux pro let me see if i can find that ipx rating for you hmm no nope, doesn't seem to have it if you go to lux pro's website they definitely have it there so i would recommend going there okay so that's pretty much um everything i'm using you know, the helmet, I, I can kind of see why people may not like it. You know, it's, I can see somebody already saying, oh, it's very gimmicky, right? You're not in the military and yet you're wearing a military helmet. So I can already see people complaining about that. But the point is, you're not, for me, I'm not buying this for looks. I am buying this because I need a place to attach my um, rear taillight and my flashlight. 
and I've tried mounting it on the board. And for this flashlight, at least when I put it on the board at that level, it looks like it could blind a car coming towards me if I happen to be, you know, riding on the opposite side of the street. It also doesn't light very effectively for me on the board. It's way, way too low and it doesn't cast a big enough light pattern out in front of me for me to anticipate my riding. Now, you might have a much better headlight than me and that might not be an issue. I've seen a couple people actually on the Facebook group for one wheel that have really, really nice setups on their board for flashlights and taillights. So, you know, you know, do whatever works for you. But for me, I don't want to spend more money on a flashlight and a taillight. I already had these two for bicycling. So I just bought this helmet to make it work for me. And I also like the fact that this is a modular system that you can tailor this to your needs. You can remove the fast railing if you don't like that and make it look like a traditional helmet. I like that there's Velcro on the back. I like that there's extra padding that it provides me. And of course that it's a very safe helmet. So, um, you know, do what you do. I would say ordering through Amazon is pretty great because you can try it in, try it on at home and then, you know, return it for free if you don't like it. Um, but if you have any other suggestions, uh, feel free to comment below. I haven't bought a whole lot of gear for my one wheel, so I am definitely not an expert in terms of accessories to buy, but so far I've used this on two rides from work at nighttime. And, um, so far it has been very good and, you know, just a personal comment. Um, don't mean to nag, but just be safe. Of course, while you're riding at night, you know, use the sidewalk if possible. And, um, just be aware that you might, you can be the most careful person out in the world, but don't assume that other people who are driving or riding bicycles are as safe as you. So just take care of yourself and practice uh, defensive driving. If you have any questions on any of these items, uh, feel free to put a message down below and I will try to get to you as soon as I can. All right, guys, ride safe, and I'll catch you on the next one.